What's going on, peoples? Um, you know, the first thing that I had this, you know, earlier today was the uh, motor call, and I, I put that one out. Um, a good friend of mine turned me on to the cigar that I'm getting ready to do now, and um, it's called the Sin Compromis Compromiso. Okay, the Sin Compromiso. Um, he gave me one to try, and when I tell you, hey, it's 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 a, it's a it's a given, you know. Um, the the body of it is um, definitely aged. The body of it is aged. The the smoke is impeccable. Um, the smoke is just, it's just a very good cigar to have with a, it's a very good cigar to have with something that's going to be, you know, a full night. You know, you're gonna be doing some, some drinking or, you know, relaxation aspect of it. You know, that's what it's gonna be about. Um, a lot of times people don't understand this process, okay? So, what normally you're supposed to do, if you have something that is um, wrapped in the cedar lining, you know, what you're supposed to do is take that apart, remove the piece of tape that is, that is on it, and what you do is you light this to light your cigar. So, it might take a couple times, but Clean burn, clean burn. And so, today, So, what you're looking at, today what we're going to talk about, and I apologize, um, a buddy of mine was always, you know, say, hey man, you're always talking about, um, you know, some positive stuff, you know, he said, what are your views on relationships? And I kind of, I usually kind of try to stray away from that because that becomes a very opinionated issue. Um, and based upon how you see it and how you see things is gonna determine the level of whether or not you are capable to even have this type of conversation. So, you know, my opinions of, of all of that is, is that, you know, like who like you, love who love you. Um, if it's someone that you can work things out with, that you can have communication with, then that's that's what you need to look at. Uh, young guy came in the other day, and we had a very interesting conversation, and and, and you know he kind of summed it up the best way possible. He says when he goes to look at choosing someone to be in a relationship with, he says the way that he does it is is that he puts them in. In a category of it's four things that are that are really that are really important, and the four things that he listed that were important was where are they at spiritually, where are they at emotionally, where are they at uh, uh, financially, and where are they at 
when it comes down to sexual um, because you can get someone that sexually off the chain you can get someone that emotionally they're okay but then if you get someone that you're not in the same lane when it comes down financially and then if you're not in the same lane when it comes down to spiritual then you're going to have issues and concerns the same way that you can have someone that that uh, sexually they just they satisfy all your needs but emotionally it's damaging and so you have to identify and understand those situations and what they are uh, you know we've had several conversations also where people you know when you go through a breakup we don't normally don't a lot of people don't give themselves time you got to give yourself time to heal you got to give yourself time to recognize and understand what made that situation go sour or what made that situation go bad um you know sometimes we'll jump right we'll jump out of the, out of the fire into the pan you know as the old folks say um so we have to identify what it is that we are looking for and be honest when you're honest you can sit here and you can say hey listen this is what i like um if sex is a major component for you don't let that overcloud the other legs that you need um you know because what's going to happen is is that you maybe can stand up a three-legged chair but once you sit down on it it's going to eventually topple over and fall and i don't even think you can have a you can have you can even stand up a chair that's on two legs because it's, it's just not going to balance out right now um a lot of people will throw a lot of things i had a conversation with my cousin and she was you know talking and she was giving her opinion about it and she said well for her one of the biggest issues is going to be trust you know now i would put trust under the emotional aspect of it but for her she wanted to be a car route okay so trust is a is a is a issue that you may want to put in its own structure so when you look at it you got four legs on a chair which is equivalent to each one of the, the different uh levels of what a person needs to be in a successful and and, and, and positive relationship and um, then you're going to have the braces, which is going to connect it to the frame. So you can have four legs on there, but guess what? Once you apply a lot of pressure to that, to that chair, the chairs are going to eventually fall open. I mean, they're going to split apart just because of the pressure. So you have to have some type of support cast to go along with it. And I guess there were, that's where trust would be a major component of that. You know, so when you look at it, okay, so, you know, trust, trust will be the hinges that connect the legs together because without the, without the trust in, in her mind, you can't even build a, you can't even build a chair for it to be able to support you and sit on and be able to take all weight restrictions that is, that's is being applied on it. So. You know, you're not going to build a chair for somebody who's 100 pounds. No, you're going to build a chair for the average and, and the normal uh, weight of weight class of a person, people that would actually be sitting in a chair. So let's go to average weight, 250. All right. So you might have some problems and some issues that come along that might make their weight feel like it's about 400 pounds. And I think that we have to identify and say, hey, what is the best thing for us to do? But you got to have communication. You got to be able to talk. You got to be able to communicate without it becoming emotional, um, and it's, that's difficult at times because you know your 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 emotions are involved in that, your heart is involved in that. So it's it's very hard to decipher when you have a situation where the person 
uh, don't show no emotion at all. Because at that point, have they checked out? But I think that we have to be very honest about what we want. We have to be very honest to the person to be able to say, I'm open for communication. And because I'm open for communication, I'm willing to have conversations with you if we have a, 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 a difference of opinion. You know, sometimes you can say you, you want to agree to disagree, but sometimes you have to really just make a, you know, get a person to understand that, hey, listen, this is how I feel. There's nothing wrong or bad about it. This is how I feel. And if you haven't given me any argument to, 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 to change that opinion or that view, then, you know, you, you are allowing for a person to form, formulate their own opinion. And that's the, I think that's one of the worst things that you can do in a relationship is to allow for a person to formulate their own opinions. Because once they formulate their own opinion, they're going to formulate it based upon their thought processes and how they, how they see it. You know, so communication is key. Communication is key. Uh, you know, from a sexual standpoint, sex is very important to a man. It is very important to a man. Um, you know what they always say, if, if, if you don't take care of a person, they'll find it out there. Um, I think that we have to learn how to be able to say, I have to make myself readily available so that if it does happen, it happens. But, you know, don't come to bed with a moo moo on. You know, don't come to bed with, you know, if you, if, if you know that this man, if you know that you're dealing with a man that has a high sex drive, don't try to put him on restrictions. And I say the same thing to guys. If you're dealing with a woman that you, the way that you got her was whining and dining, that's what she expects. So understand the simple fact that that's something that you're going to have to keep up. You know, so that's just how it is. We, you know, men and women see things in a two, totally different manner. But I just wanted to talk with you guys. First of all, hey, man, smoke well, smoke good. You know what I'm saying? Find that peace. Find that peace. Oh, and by the way, this is box press. So if y'all can't see it, it's box press. Um, and I'm a big fan of box presses. The reason why I'm a fan of box presses is because as the cigar gets more, as you smoke the cigar more and more, the leaf has a tendency to loosen up. So it makes the breathing aspect of the cigar crazy. That's when you're going to hit all your notes. That's when you're going to hit all your flavors. It's going to be based once that cigar opens up and it smokes. And it smokes like it's supposed to. So I want to give a shout out to my man who turned me on to this. Dude, this is up there with, with the, with the Placentius. This is a very good cigar. Now, the price point of this cigar is going to be priced right around that, 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 that market. So you look, you're looking anywhere between $23 to $27 for your, you know, $28 for your cigar. Um, it's not going to be for everyone. Everyone is not going to be able to understand and identify the notes and the taste that's going to go on with this cigar. For the ones that don't want and not willing to try to learn about the culture, this may not be the cigar for you. But for the guys that are really into the lifestyle, you got to try it. You got to try it. Smoke well, my friends. Enjoy.